Welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. Hope you're doing fantastic out there. You know, it's uh, we got a squirrely weekend with the weather, man. So everybody, uh, be safe out there. Hope uh, you have a fantastic weekend ahead of you. Wanted to get to this. So uh, we haven't had a, a lot of Tua silly sauce lately in the way of uh, people saying dumb things. But there's been a couple. There's been a couple of things that have come out recently uh, from the uh, from the heads over at Fox. And um, there was a mock draft. It's mock draft season. And this uh, this dude, Joel Klatt, who is their number one college football analyst, he was uh, doing his mock draft. And he made the point that he would like to see the Miami Dolphins draft Michael Penix Jr. at number 21 overall. And that he feels that he is a better fit for Mike McDaniel and Mike McDaniel's offense. But uh, some of his reasoning was very, 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 very weird. Um, the first point out of the gate was him saying when he drew this up that the extension still hasn't dropped for Tua, which I found very, very weird. And um, anyway, here's a little clip of this. This is from the Joe Klot show. We waited a long time because I, I've wanted to do this. I did it in my first mock and I'm going to do it again here. And I've just been waiting and waiting and waiting on the Tua contract news. So, full disclosure, at the time of this recording, Tua does not have a deal. And to me, that's telling. Okay. It's telling. Why? Just for an example on this, we're sitting here. It is March 22nd. I just want to refresh everybody's memory on some things. We did the same damn thing when it came to the fifth year option. Like, this is not our first rodeo with this. We were we were at this same talking point with Tua Tungavailoa and talking about where's the fifth year option? Why haven't they picked it up yet? Where, where, where is it? Where is it? I, I, I don't understand. Where, 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 blah, 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 blah. And I, I was just in, like, Chris Greer has already been on the record saying these deals take a while. Everybody has said this is probably going to go into summer. Did people really think the Tua Tungavailoa contract was going to be done by the draft? I, I, I just because I just went off on like I, I, I heard this point and I'm like, all right, let's just play Klotz game here. All right, let's go with everybody's favorite quarterbacks who. Nobody had any question, extension, when was it going to happen? Any worries? When was it going to happen? Was it telling, you know, with Coach? So Justin Herbert, let's just look. Justin Herbert just signed his extension last year. Happy to see the date on it. July 26th. Must have been telling before draft time that they didn't give it an extension. Okay. Then we go to numero uno from his draft, draft class. Joe Burro. When did Joe Burro sign his extension. Google machine says, hmm, September 7th. Pfft, must have been telling. All right. What about Lamar Jackson, who went all the way through his fifth year option, who went through all of the the uh, the intricacies of his contract, big standoff. When did his happen? Oh, all right. Well, with all that drama, May of 2023. So still after the draft, after that happened. And Josh Allen. All right, let's look back. Josh Allen, 2021. When did Josh Allen get his extension? All right, these are cool quarterbacks everybody loves, right? Uh, Josh Allen, August 6th, back in 2021. All right, so somehow, some way, Tua not having his contract extension worked out, even though all parties have been positive about it, everybody has said it's going in a good direction. I don't know what's true. I don't know what's not true. But what I do know is it not being done by the time I'm recording this March 22nd is not telling of anything other than seems like business is normal. You're going to give somebody an extension. That's a monster monster deal. Ah, we'll give it a little bit of time. Let's see. Uh, let's see what what all plays out. You know, let's see what happens when this when this all goes down. The only guy you could probably look at this and say, all right. We have somewhat of a uh, of a bridge to figure out where is the contract. Daniel Jones, he agreed to his monster deal where everybody was like, holy crap, you gave Daniel Jones that much money? And that happened back in March 
of 2023. So maybe that was maybe this is the barometer that that Joel was using. He did not mention that in his clip, but he said that it was telling. Every other quarterback doesn't usually get done until at least after the draft, except for Danny Dimes, who, by the way, I remember this deal happening. I was like, well, that's the that is the layup of all layups that to his fifth year option is going to get picked up because it, it was one of those where you're like, oh, well, that is uh, that's pr- pretty obvious that the Dolphins are then going to give this uh, some time. And, and are going to at least have the fifth year option as an insurance policy based on how the prices of quarterbacks are going. Anyway, that was just my first little quibble with his comments. But let's uh, let's go to Joel, who uh, is going to give his reasoning as to why Tua should be dra- uh, the, sh- Tua should no longer be the Dolphins' target as franchise quarterback, and that they should go with Michael Penix Jr., who, by the way, is fantastic lefty also. The way I view Tua and Mike McDaniel's offense is that it's not the right offense for him. This is not an indictment on Tua in the NFL as much as it is fit. I keep saying that. And when, when you watch Miami and what they, what they really do, what they need is a guy that throws on time with great leverage and accuracy down the field. And there just so happens to be a guy that that is his best attribute sitting there available, and that's Michael Penix. I still want to see Michael Penix with Mike McDaniel's offense and Tyreek Hill because, let's face it, as good as Tua has played, and he has, he's gotten so much better, this is probably not the right fit. Every time you look up and you watch the highlights, Tyreek Hill is having to stop and reach back and catch. What do you see when you watch Washington, Roma Dunze, Jalen Polk, McMillan, all those guys? What do they do? Never break stride down the field. All guys, obviously, who are faster than Tyreek Hill, who you know outruns basically everybody and has to come back. I, by the way, I've never seen so many touchdowns complained about with Tyreek Hill where he's had, like you would think Tyreek Hill is always getting tripped up at the five when this happens. Like when Tyreek Hill does blow past every single cornerback and, and Tua doesn't uh, catch him, you would think that he's getting tripped up All the time, which he's not. But I find this crazy because you're talking about a guy who you don't think is a fit for Mike McDaniel's offense. When Mike McDaniel, the whole reason he has the job and the whole reason, the whole first thing that he got the job for was because he realized how much of a fit the guy was for his offense. And I just I I find this wild that we're, we're doing this with. With you don't think Tua, you think Tua has his flaws. You think Tua has, uh, you know, is it the perfect hey, man? I don't want to have that argument for you. It, it, it's fine if you're the Dolphin who wants to draft anybody and you're super excited, pff, dude. By all means, light up the comments. I'm not really against you. Have your opinion, dude. I don't want to. I don't want to quibble on that. But I will say this: to sit here and talk about. Timing and accuracy not being part of Tua's skill set, especially down the field when his air yards, his passing, his total passing yards, having Tyreek Hill have his career highs with Tua Tungavailoa, all of those arguments don't really pass like the smell test at all. At all. They don't. It's just a it's just a strange thing that People are looking for vulnerabilities, and you want to fit because this is supposed to be some super QB class, and you're looking, hey, Michael Penix is a good player. When should he go? A little bit of a weird prospect, some injury pass. When should you – what would be the fit for him? Oh, what if he was with Miami with all that speed? Oh, what if he was? But here's the thing, dude. He's still going to be a rookie coming on in, and if you're the Miami Dolphins, in all honesty, and you're in this situation right now where you have – the money you're paying, a lot of hefty contracts you've you've doled out. We've all talked about the cap hell that they've been out. They just lost Christian Wilkins because they're going to pay to a tongue of Iloa. You're in this situation all over the place. You're really thinking that the Miami Dolphins should just blow it up and go with a rookie quarterback, and that is somehow going to work better than a guy going into his third year of the offense who the coach mere weeks ago had said, I believe in him more now than I ever have. That was Mike McDaniel, Joel. You know, like the guy who is his offense, his fit, how everything should be, you know, uh, thought of. Maybe we should give Mike McDaniel a little bit of credibility while he was at the combine and saying to people, and he's talking about, "Eh, you know, what do we, 
What do we think about uh, Tua Tungavailoa? What do we think about the idea of him in this offense and what he could be? Mike McDaniel's like, believe in him more than ever. Since day one, my belief um, has always been strong from day one in Tua. It's stronger um, than it was the first day I met him. And that's because uh, of, of that relationship where I'm focused, which is um, continuing to provide the coaching so he can continue to evolve his game as, as he has since the second that I started talking to him. Mm, interesting. So again, stronger than it was in day one, than it, than it was stronger today than it was even a day one in Tua, who we know works hard, who we know go into the, goes into the offseason, looks at his flaws, does he have to get stronger one year? Does it? Does he have to learn how to fall one year and take up a martial art and look goofy and, and take the – does it? Does all the things that, that you would want your quarterback to do, a very young player who is 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 leading the league in passing and you don't think that he is a fit for an offense that the coach seems to think the reason that he has the job is fixing him and making him a fit for the offense. I just think it's weird, man. And the other thing is – We've seen this already with young players and Mike McDaniel. It's it, these guys trying to adjust to the offense, very complex offense, long ass play calls. Um, you know, everybody, even Tyreek Hill would tell you, I didn't have a grasp of what I was doing the first year in the offense. Everybody's, you know, loves the cheetah and loves what he brings, it, but he'll even tell you the first year. So you're going to have a rookie quarterback come in here with all these loaded weapons and okay maybe it works out like cj stroud but I, last i checked cj stroud did not make it to the super bowl he's probably going to be really awesome but he beat the the corpse of joe flacco in a playoff game all right dude so i'm just I, I just think that to to just look at some kid and be like ah he, you could roll anybody into mike mcdaniel's offense and just assume they're gonna take the reins of it and be awesome dude we've already seen examples of this of their backups, it doesn't work the same. It doesn't work the same as it does with Tua. You know, you, you, ba- the the guy being able to mask a, a an offensive line that was very, I mean, shifting more starting lineups than you would care during the during the uh, entire regular season, getting the ball out the way that it. Hey, did he poop the bed at the end of the season along with a lot of other players on this team and the coach? Yeah, they did not perform. They yacked it up, and. I understand why that opens everything up for scrutiny. I think that's fair. I think that's fair to open up scrutiny for all this. But I got to be honest with you, with the Miami Dolphins having the roster situations that they have right now and the needs that they have right now, there are Dolphin fans that you you would celebrate them taking a quarterback in the first. I would be fine with them even taking a quarterback late. You want to take another project? You want to take another Skylar Thompson? Cool. Fine. I'm good with that. But you want to waste Mike McDaniel's first crack at a first round pick with all the directions he can go. Go get a new weapon. Go get some off- offensive linemen. Go get a replacement for Christian Wilkins with quarterbacks probably knocking down some really good talent to the Dolphins at 21. And and this dude thinks that, oh, no, no, they should go with Michael Penix. That'll be the fix for everything. What? Because because of, because of you think he throws on time deep like Tua doesn't? Uh, what? It's very strange to me. Never seen so many people care about the way somebody looks catching a touchdown. Like the Dolphins, like anybody cares about how like Tua and Tyree Kill aren't on the same page with each other or don't have great chemistry with each other or haven't put up good numbers with each other. You would think this is like back to like Tannehill, Mike Wallace, where that very clearly was a relationship and a chemistry that did not work, did not work. We've seen this, Dolphin fans. We've seen this recent history where the Dolphins go and get a big-time wide receiver. Yeah, and I know Michael Wallace cannot hold uh, Tyree Kill's jockstrap, but also only Daniel could make that guy a possession receiver. So to sit here and act like Tyree Kill is an MVP candidate, but also that there's another quarterback that's going to fit better with him, he literally had the best quarterback on the planet and didn't put up these numbers with him. It's just weird. It's a weird thing. And I even see today, I saw, um, I think it was uh, First Things First, Nick Wright was suggesting, oh, you know what the Dolphins should do? They should trade to it or the Minnesota Vikings. And I was like, what? So let me get this straight. 
of all the teams, and I haven't, I didn't watch the segment. I admit I'm going off a tweet. So maybe they made this point, but of all the teams in the league that this guy could be traded to, you want him to go to the team with the coach that hates him the most. What are we doing? Like, Hey, have takes get wild, but can we have a little bit of sound logic with stuff? You know me. I love getting a little screwy. I love shooting for the moon on things. But for the for for your arguments for this to be, Tua doesn't have the accuracy, the timing, or the deep ball that these guys. When the guy has answered all of those, check 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 all those things. Doesn't throw as good in uh you know when when things when the timing is messed up when there's pressure on him. Does he need to get better at this stuff? Hell yes, he does. Hell yes, he does. Is that good enough when he doesn't have a clean pocket and doesn't have a lick of a window? Does he have to improve? Yes, absolutely. Duh. Is he a perfect quarterback? No. If, even if the Dolphins told me, if I got, hey, Tua, go prove it this year, dude. Go play out your fifth-year option. I'm fine with it. I really am. I would be fine with it. I would understand it if that was the case. But to say here on March 22nd, when all parties have said, that, yeah, we're working towards an extension. We want an extension. Everything's seeming positive. <sighs> Hasn't been that extension yet. Uh, that tells me something when like every good quarterback and their extension has happened in the summertime or even right before the regular season is crazy to me.